There are 18 days between Manchester United's game against Atletico Madrid and Manchester United's game against Leicester. We all hoped that we would see some, something, something different, you know, you know, some sort of response from these players. But instead, we saw much of the same. And we've now had five managers since Fergie. We're about to get our sixth manager. We don't know who it's going to be, Ten Hag or Poch still. But now we're seeing and hearing rumours and reports that there's a bit of a split in the dressing room and the fact that some of the players might see Ten Hag as underwhelming. And I'll be honest, that's made me angry. That's why I'm going to do this video. Sure, it might not be completely true, that report. I've got yeah, something you've got to take into consideration. I'll tell you what, not much of this squad has earned my trust in terms of supporting what I think they're doing. And I want to speak about that in this video. Look, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, would you please uh, consider subscribing? If you agree or disagree, just let me know in the comments below. As always, if everybody does in this channel, I suppose. That's what I asked for. I asked, for, I asked to make it interactive. But uh, as I said, I was going to do a video today on Ralph Rannick's plans to take Manchester United forward. And then this has been released by Samuel Luckhurst in the Manchester Evening News, saying that Manchester United's dressing room is split over the possible appointment of Eric Ten Hag. And let's read this article together and see exactly what it says. It said the Manchester United dressing room is split over the possible appointment of Eric Ten Hag as the club's next manager. Let me zoom in there so you can read it in a bit you can read it a bit clearer. Uh yeah, so it's split over the appointment of Ten Hag apparently. Manchester Evening News revealed that Ten Hag is United's preferred candidate last month. A number of United's players are excited by the prospect of being coached by Ten Hag and feel he would improve them, but sources close to other players say Ten Hag is viewed as an underwhelming choice by some of them. You want to talk about underwhelming? How about that for underwhelming? How about, well, you want to talk about underwhelming? Let's go back here. Middlesbrough, underwhelming finishing. Ridiculous that United didn't win that game. Burnley, un ridiculously underwhelming finishing. Can't believe we didn't win that game. Southampton, underwhelming finishing. How do we not win that game? Then if, if you're looking at games where you can truly with your hand on your heart say you're not underwhelmed by Manchester United's performance, aside from those ridiculous 10 minutes in the second half when we considered two against Leeds, that was a good game. I enjoyed that one. I enjoyed watching United. but And I enjoyed watching United for the second half against Atletico. But then Watford, nil-nil, getting humiliated by City. Ronaldo dominated there then what happened in the second leg against Atletico Madrid what we saw against Leicester and what we've just seen largely all season long in 2021 2020 2019 18 17 16 15 14 13 no, not, not 13 my bad Ooh, went about too far sorry Fergie don't hate me these players man there just comes a time when patterns keep repeating themselves too often that things keep happening and it's happened under, as I said, we're, we're on our fifth manager now, about to go into our sixth. And we're hearing the idea that some of this Manchester United squad is underwhelmed by the idea of Eric Ten Hag becoming manager. How, how? How can they, with any sort of sense of pride, look at anybody else and consider them underwhelming with what these players have done? Now, it might be unfair of me to have Harry Maguire... Uh, and, his, and his picture on the thumbnail, but Harry Maguire is the captain of this team. Therefore, he represents this team. And if we're talking about underwhelming, he is the king of the underwhelming side of Manchester United this year. But Eric, Ten and I'll be honest, right? This isn't just about Eric Ten Hag, all right? This isn't just me being angry towards the idea that, that some of the players don't particularly want Ten Hag in. I can understand if that comes down to an opinion, but the idea that you might be underwhelmed by him Jesus, do you know what Pochettino is going to do to these Manchester United players if he comes in? He's going to he's going to end them. We look here at the running stats from this is from uh, his interview with Sky Sports uh, back in I think November 2020 when he was uh, in the in the break before he went to PSG and replaced Tuchel. Look at the run, the highest distance per game. Top of the top of the tree is his Southampton team. 117 kilometers per game. And I'm sure this, this may have changed. There might be some updated stats on this. But these were correct as of the 3rd of November, 2020. Tottenham, 2015-16, they're there. Tottenham, 2016-17, they're there. Tottenham, 2017-18, they're there. You see the pattern that's getting... If these players don't like the idea of working under Ten Hagen, maybe put, you know what, putting in a bit of fucking effort. What the hell are they going to do if Pochettino comes in and becomes Manchester United's manager? I swear to God. I just don't really, I'm just starting to lose patience, man. 
I'm really, really starting to lose patience. And you know by now that I'm I'm somebody who, yeah, I, I'm, I consider myself a moderate United fan. I'm not somebody who's going to jump on a bandwagon straight away. You throw someone under a bus straight away. I thought I overstepped the mark. I did a video that said like Anthony Martial was done at United. I kind of regretted doing that video. But then lo and behold, he's loaned out. And he's probably not going to play for Manchester United again. So I kind of stand by my opinion. But I didn't particularly like doing that. I've done three or four play videos on Harry Maguire now. He shouldn't be Manchester United captain. I've said that multiple times. But under Moyes, under Van Howe, Mourinho, Solskjaer, Ragnick, we're hearing the same sorts of problems consistently. Time and time and time again. And this, this notion, as I said, it's that word that's really, really irks me. Underwhelming choice. Who the fuck are these United players to say that anybody else is underwhelming with the performances that they're putting in? It's really not hard to gain the support of fans in any club. Whether you're playing for Grimsby, Leighton Orient, Stockport, Salford or Manchester United. If you put in a shift, fans will forgive errors. Fans will forgive mistakes because you're, you're putting in a shift. If you're not doing that, then you will be slated quicker. You're making your job harder. You're losing the support of fans because you just do not give a fuck for playing for Manchester United. And the idea there that they might be underwhelmed. Let's see what else is written inside this article down here. Poch was a favoured pick among the majority of United players two months ago. Uh, disenchantment is still rife within the United squad with the mood worsened. And look, you go down here and you hear this sort of stuff. Interim manager Ralph Rannick's decision not to start Rashford despite the absence of fellow forwards Ronaldo, Cavani, Martial and Greenwood is believed to have baffled some teammates. Again, you want to talk to me about baffling? Is how there are, how the majority of these are, are professional footballers. Like week in, week out. As I said, Look at these results. Drawing against Leicester. Knocked out of Champions League there. Great hat-trick from Ronaldo there. Humiliated by City. Drawing against Watford. Who are crap. Away, away draw at Atletico. Decent. 4-2 away win at Ellen Road. Decent. Beating Brighton. Well, that took the was it second half that came out. Decent. Horrendous finishing. Horrendous finishing. Horrendous finishing. Probably the most controlled performance we've had this season, I think, was that one there. That 1-0 that, that win over West Ham. But that just pisses me off, this, this concept that some of these players are underwhelmed. Well, all I want to see, right, is Ralph Ragnick being listened to at Manchester United. I don't think these players are really, truly listening to him. And as I said, the, the, the greatest example of that is the fact that we did it so well, this style of play, the Ragnick pressing system. We implemented it perfectly in the first 30 minutes against Palace. And I was like, Jesus, I did not expect that. Nobody, no, no fan reasonably expected us to play as well as we did in that first 30 minutes. And instead of building on that, the players are like, it almost seems like, going, oh, geez, man, that was hard. That was hard. That was why the last 60 minutes were a bit of a struggle. And then obviously he came up with Fred's goal. It was 1-0 in, in Ragnick's first game. Man United just need to trust Ragnick. Trust the idea that he wants to bring in an actual genuine vision, a five-year plan, a proper five-year plan to know where we want to get Manchester United towards. Now, I think Eric Ten Hag is the right man for that. I can understand, and I've, I've made this very clear a lot, on a lot of occasions. I can understand if you, if you do think it's that Pochettino is your preferred choice. And I think there's, there's justification for both. It's just not where my opinion lies. I think it should be Ragnick being allowed to say what he wants to say. And, he said, and the big thing here about, about Ragnick, the big thing that's different, I would say, under Ragnick compared to other managers, is he's the most honest manager I've ever seen in my life. Really, like... Integrity straight up there, 10 out of 10. He says it how it is. Maybe that's sometimes to a fault, right? But there's no smoke and mirrors with Ragnick. He says exactly what is needed all the time. But I find it difficult to think that these players can't really respect him and, and they don't understand what he's talking about and they don't understand these tactics. Nah. They just don't want to put in the hard graft. That's all it looks like. Because we can do it. We even saw it in the first half against Atletico Madrid. It was a completely different sort of intensity to how we played against Leicester because it's a Champions League game, because they're buzzing for a Champions League game. You should just be playing like that every goddamn week. They're professional athletes who don't act professional 90% of the time. They are underwhelming professionals, all right? That's how I would describe the majority of this Manchester United squad. So this concept there, it's just really pissed me off, that word there, underwhelming. 
Pot Kettle Black. There's so many inside this Manchester United squad that I would just get rid of and I wouldn't bat an eyelid. We wouldn't miss them one jot. I don't give a fuck what these players want. Most of them won't be here in two, three years' time. Get the right man in. Listen to Ralph Ragnick. Start operating this football club as a football club. Don't let the footballers run the club. The club runs the footballers. That needs to change. That mentality and that part of whatever you want to call it, that needs to change. Uh, it was a bit of a different video to usual, I suppose, but that really annoyed me. And the idea that there's so many of these players who just have such a heightened self sense of self-importance. You're a United player. So many of you are just going to get forgotten about when you leave. I'll be honest, I want plenty of them to leave now. And I don't care what they think. If Ten Hag's the right man for the club, bring him in. Let him do whatever he wants. Boot most of them out. See if I care. See if it makes a difference to this United team. It will make a difference. We'll get better because of it.